Welcome to a, a new series of podcasts uh, that Cornerstone Church are doing on uh, bringing up boys. Uh, my name's Pete Woodcock. I'm the pastor at Cornerstone Church, and with me is uh, Dean and Chris Dryden. Uh, Dean, uh, introduce yourself, Dean. Uh, yeah, Dean, I'm the family's worker at Cornerstone, and uh, married to Chris, who's sitting over there. And I'm Chris, and I'm married to Dean, um, and we have five children. Uh, so this topic is of interest to us yeah most of them are boys Uh, yeah five children three (laughs) boys two girls um and so we're going to deal with this topic because because it's come up uh uh, largely because of uh uh, what's been sort of discovered going on in schools and uh the way boys have been treating girls sexually and and so forth so we want to be quite frank in these podcasts and we want to deal with uh real issues um it's often um boys are often sort of talked about as if they're the toxic ones, and and to be honest, uh, I do th- I do think boys are really quite put down, um, and so we don't want to just put b- boys down. We want to help um, families and parents to bring up boys mm-hmm. in the in the way uh, that will uh, 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 glorify really what they are and uh, help them to deal with with girls, and particularly in this area of sexuality. Yeah. Uh, there was a very good article a few weeks ago um, in on in March in um, the Times, and it was called "Toxic Boys: uh, What Parents Need to Know About Bringing Up Boys." And um, there's some good wisdom in, in that, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, um, I think it was. Uh, it, there was loads of good practical advice. That's what struck me about it. First, first read, really. Yeah. Yeah, and some of that advice really is, uh, you know, it really is from Christianity, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. That's sort of the, the the missing thing. The foundation this is all built on is a Christian world. Yeah. Know? So when um, I read it, I thought, well, this is sort of, um, sort of, uh, all sort of quite obvious, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one of the things I thought. I thought this is parenting. This is what parents should yeah. s- are supposed to be doing. Yeah. Isn't it obvious? Um, but what they miss out is, I think, is God and the scriptures, and and it takes it makes it even better, yeah. doesn't it, when yeah. you know the scriptures. Mm. Um, so anyway, the first uh, point that they go to is um, helping young boys to develop empathy, um, and uh, they give some good good advice on that. Um, you know that we we should try to help uh, 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 boys uh, understand their emotions. Uh, understand other people's emotions that we should talk to them in a way that would teach them to have uh, emotional literacy and yep. so forth and be able to deal with that yeah yeah I, th- I think um, you know it, 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 one of the big practical uh, things from this section was like talk to the boy talk to your boys uh, don't just uh, they 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 will maybe need coaxing and they might be a little bit more quiet um, but don't forget them. It's easier to talk to girls. They, they're more, they're designed uh, more to talk. But, they are. Uh, but then if we think about parenting from the beginning, from when they're born, we're helping them figure out their emotions, right? Babies cry. They can't tell us why they're crying. They don't know why they're crying. We as parents, it's our job to figure out what are they feeling? Are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they hurt? Are they upset? So that starts from the very beginning, and those kinds of things we're thinking uh, without really even thinking about it. And so um, we just need to continue those conversations. It's not just um, we need to treat boys differently than girls. We actually treat them the same from the beginning. And then as they develop and as we get to know them, then we can start having more specific, um, appropriate, um, and individual conversations with them. And it may not it may not necessarily make sense to you because you think this little this little one can hardly understand you know four letter words or or five letter words you know what what about emotional literacy obviously you don't use that kind of language with them but you help them to to sort of you you name their emotions you know that's what that's what the article's saying uh, yeah. help them to connect their emotions with with what just happened yeah just yeah absolutely just go back to to chris because i think that's really helpful because I, what you said because i think um uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, what are you feeling? Oh, I've got no idea what I'm feeling. Exactly. And I don't know whether that's just a blokey thing. Oh, well, I mean, you can yeah. talk about when when men are grumpy, yeah. right? Quite often, men are grumpy because they're actually hungry, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So if you go shopping yeah. with your wife, but you haven't eaten, you're going to get grumpy very, very fast. <laughs> and they call it hangry, don't they? Yeah. But 
kids experience that as well. And they need parents to help guide them through those feelings and yeah. to say, actually, you're in a really bad mood because you need to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, that's what you need. And they'll fight you on it. But as a parent, it's our job to help them think through those and to think through why is my child behaving this way? Why are they feeling this way? How can I help them handle these emotions that they're feeling? So what I like about what you're saying is that, um, so it seems from this article, you could almost get the idea that they have, they've got to go internally to discover their own sort of feelings. But what you're saying is that there is actually what real need for an external um, understanding of uh, you know, I can't really understand myself, but someone else can actually see me and understand me often better than I can understand Absolutely. myself. Absolutely. And you get that in the scriptures, don't you? Absolutely. So, so you know, if you take sort of Proverbs, yeah. uh, you, the, the, the whole thing is there is a father teaching his son. Hmm. He's walking through life. And he's walking through everyday events that yeah. the son is going to see. And, and, and actually, he's talking them through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like... You know, there's a big burden on helping boys to know how to treat women yeah. the right way. And Proverbs one, you know, it's it says, look, listen to your father and don't neglect your mother's teaching. So even the the writer of the Proverbs is saying, look, sons, <laughs> treat your mums well. Like you know, listen to me and listen to your mum. Yeah. Brilliant. It's, you know, it's 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 like a uh, there's 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 equality for you. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and what would you say about um, just sort of not – because I think to take a boy and say, all oh, right, son, we're going to talk now about this emotion, um, I, I know I would respond very badly to that. <laughs> as, uh, um, but just uh, what about just a sort of – just the, the normal conversation where all kinds of emotional talk go on, you know, in other words, the, just sitting around the dinner table is pretty good, isn't it? Absolutely. Sitting around the dinner table, talking about how your day went. Mm. Um, you know, quite often kids will say, oh, I had a really horrible day or this is the worst day ever because of this. And then you can talk them through, well, what was going on there? Um, and you can also help them deal with their feeling and how they responded to the way that they felt and whether that was right or wrong. Um, that that's quite helpful. And it's just, you don't even think about the teaching and the learning and the modeling that's taking place when you're, when you're having those conversations. Mm. But I think with boys, especially it is sometimes, sometimes as a parent, yeah, you do have to call it out and you have to deal with it there. You know, you can't let certain behaviors carry on, but also you have to wait for the time when they're ready to talk about it mm. and, you know, be even if it's the most annoying time for you as a parent, you need to take that time and either say, I'd really like to talk to you about this now, uh, but we've got to do this or it's time for bed and it's really late and let's talk about it at another time. But then you have to be intentional about going back to that conversation mm. and having it. But these things happen all day long throughout the day. If, if we're ready and listening as parents, I think we have to be ready. I think quite often we're so distracted by so many things. That so, we so, 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 you're saying, you know, it's knowing our kids, and um, uh, there, there are times where you, just to try to talk to them about something, it's just not going to work. Exactly. Because in the heat they're, of the they're, moment, they're, especially. they're taken up in the heat of the moment. They're taken up with that emotion. They can't. It's, see it's a it. bit like your wife when you're driving, telling you to calm down, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's just not. It doesn't sort of, you know, just yeah. Yeah, that you, never you, happens to me. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and um, I mean, let's face it, as adults, how many of us like to sit down and calmly talk through things when we're all worked up about yeah, something? Yeah. We need to sort of blow off steam. We need to do something to then be able to come back and have a conversation. And we shouldn't expect anything more of our children if we can't do that as adults. But I think I think also like taking taking their age into account as well is 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 um you don't have to be, have massive long discussions no. and essays you know so for instance if you go back go back to the kitchen, kitchen table around yeah. the dinner table if you start saying let's talk about your day how how are you feeling they're gonna you know they're gonna respond maybe negatively to that but if you set it up like we're gonna do good news bad news mm. how you know what was good about your day what was bad about your day you know yep. get the good news out out first and then that opens up the sort of channels for for talking and, yeah. and that that's when it kind of flows but also when something does blow up, you know you you have to yeah you do have to choose your 
moments. But if you, let's say you use the naughty step or the you know timeout, timeout chair or whatever, um, you go over to them and, you know, name the, name the emotion. You, you know, you responded like you were really angry then, you know, mm. and it's, it, it seems to be because your, you know, your brother took the toy or, you know, like whatever, you know, name the, name the emotion, connect it to the, the, the action that just happened. And, but, but that's what, that's what the article's saying. But we, we have a deeper thing to go to as well. And that is to, to know your heart, you know, um, mm-hmm. these aren't just, these aren't just emotions. Mm. These are, these are from the heart, you know, uh, these, these are, um, this is, it goes, it's a deeper part of you. Mm. Uh, and so, so, um, what's going on there? Uh, you know, and, and you have to teach your, there's an opportunity to, to talk to your young ones about, about their hearts and start that early as well. Again, you might get totally puzzled looks, but if you start, you know, if you start early, they will they will they will learn the kind of because the, the point learn is learn the language, not you know? just being able to identify their emotions, right? We don't want mm. children, we don't want humans to be able to just no. well, I was feeling angry or I was feeling upset. This person hurt me. That's great. You can identify that emotion, but what are you going to do with that? How are you going to respond? And that's what we need to be doing is talking to the heart of the matter. Yes, you might be feeling that way, Mm. but let's talk through what a right response is Mm. or, and, or if they responded wrongly, talk through that response and why it was wrong, because it's great to have empathy and to be able to identify emotions. But if that's all you can do, you're stuck. Yes. You're headed for disaster. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, the Bible does help us here a lot because because it's not it's not just, as you say, identifying an emotion. It's saying, uh, is that emotion right and wrong? Right. Yeah. So there is a right and wrong here, isn't there? Yeah. So there's, it's so, emotional literacy, but also like moral literacy as well. That's, yeah. That's huge. And that's where, you know, the whole uh, idea of God teaching us, yep. um, the fact that God uh, tells us... Um, you know what is right and wrong there's a bigger uh, you know as you were saying y- you need you need to to read your your boy and to help him to understand his emotion and you, you are outside reading him but we've got god haven't we in the scriptures yeah. that is showing us and uh, and 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 there is also confession isn't there and admitting that we're failures and admitting that we actually need god's help in this that's why around the table and even praying and talking about God is a terrific yeah. thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Just to go back to around the table, I'm sorry if you want to come yeah, back yeah, to that. Yeah. Um, it's not just talking about their emotions, is it, mm. around the table? Because where they're going to pick up is is your day, isn't it? Yeah. And they, they have to learn to take their turn as well. Absolutely. And so they're going to hear mum, uh, you know, is is saying, I've, I had a terrible day or I didn't know how to deal with this this thing at work you know you're not necessarily going to tell all the details but you say i i was i was really upset by this bloke or or this yeah. you know person at work or something and and they're watching mum and dad uh, talking about emotions and mm-hmm. saying you know to be honest i was really angry at them i didn't know what to do um and and watching you know how i love this person how i forgive this person how i how I respond uh, to God's laws in my life. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. We and and having people over as well, and having those kinds of conversations is quite helpful. I remember an example: we had some friends over, and we did this go around the table, good news, bad news. And one of our adult friends said, "I needed to do something today, and I really didn't want to, but I knew that's what God wanted me to do." And sometimes following God is really hard and what a testimony that was for our kids and our one of our kids said you're right it is hard sometimes (laughs) and you know it was great because there they saw an adult saying i struggle with this but i'm glad i did it because i was blessed in the end and they can then take that on board and it's it's helpful for them to see the adults talking about these things and realizing that they're not alone with these difficulties. Yeah. yeah. Jumping ahead in, in the article to a later section, it does bring in the fact that, you know, it's part of your family. It, it, it says family culture. And I think that's a great word and, and a great sort of um, 
thing to think about is what is the culture of your family if you're a christian family then part of the culture of your family is going to be the bible and you know worshiping god together and talking about you know jesus together and he's going to be he's going to be part of your life yeah and part of all of your discussions and you know so that's why we do have that higher standard to sort of appeal to you know when it yeah. comes to teaching kids right and wrong uh, and, and 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 like you say um what do you do with your with your emotions that stir you up you know what yeah. is the right response how do i treat girls you know what, what's what's the right way you know if, if a, a girl might have been really horrible to you um and you know and how do you respond you know you don't you don't raise your fists you don't you know one you, you do not hit girls you know it's one very strong you can principle. hit blokes okay yeah you know? well you can def- <laughs> i think i think you can defend yourself yeah, yeah yeah you know i think even with you know you can so i teach the boys Look, you can defend yourself, okay? Yep. It's when you start going back. Yeah. That's when it starts to get blurry, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, Let's yeah. go on the girls thing then. Yeah. So, um, so because the whole idea is obviously to have empathy and we're particularly thinking about towards girls. Um, where, 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 do we, where do we begin? I mean, um, do we show boys and girls are different? Uh, definitely, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think that's, that's an easy one because it's so plainly obvious mm. you know what well, especially if you have a sister <laughs> yeah. um uh, there's going to be there's going to be bath times there's going to be times when you know uh, when uh, you know clothes are off and and stuff is happening um and so and you, you, so, you, so actually, you mean that you would you would say you don't burst in on your sister yeah yeah, yeah yeah definitely yep. yeah you knock you know knock before you go into yep. the, her room um you know we, we had kids that were actually sharing a room and, and you know it was boys uh, Aaliyah was sharing with her, her brothers at, at some point, but there comes a time when she, you know, she has to have her own space. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, just just even just helping the boys to know they are different to start with. Yeah, you know, I don't think you have to get out sort of diagrams and stuff. You know, uh, but if if you're if you're a boy, if 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 you have a little boy, and let's say you you're having another baby, there's a great opportunity to to sort of to talk about the differences. You could we could have a sister. Uh, why is mummy's belly getting big? You know, why is your not belly getting big? Mm. Well, my well, belly, maybe my, your belly is. My, <laughs> my belly is, is getting big, but it's for a different it's, reason. It's, you know? Yeah, uh, that's food. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, I've got to help her out. Empathy. With the, I Empathy. Have, I have to help her out the cravings. You know, um, but but all those and, and I think the the Bible it it talks about this um, in 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 Deuteronomy in, in in a different way. It's talking about teaching your children the law of God. You know, but it says when you sit down and when you rise up when you walk along the road i just mm. think we have opportunities all day yes. and, yeah. and all around us to just throw in a little comment you know or a little just a little Absolutely. line if we yeah. know it's our job to nurture and raise our boys uh in the fear and the, in, and the knowledge of, of the lord then then we need to have our wits about us for opportunities. Yes. You know, I, I think that's a, I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. But so, so one of the things I would do is, is, and I think we've got to watch, you know, telly and the programs they're watching. Yeah. If, it's, if it's telly or whatever it is, you yeah. know, Netflix or something. I do think we do have to sit and watch uh, them. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes because <laughs> uh, they may be boring for us and we're commenting on them. Mm. Yeah. And um, particularly sort of adverts. Yeah. So and, and now of course they're not watching TV so much. They're watching stuff on their phones and yeah. YouTube, but there are adverts put in. Yeah. Mm. So we want to see those adverts somehow. And that's where you comment. Yeah. Um yeah. you know, so we would I would all and I would use humor mass- mm. massively with with my kids. Um, to say, what, what do you mean? Because she's worth it, uh, you know. Or, or you know, uh, you would comment on, "Look at that bloke. Why is he doing that?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, or uh, and it, it would just sort of show up some mm. of the trends and the things that are being promoted yeah, yeah. in in the advertising. I, I think another big one is uh, so like we. I used to drive Aaliyah to uh, to school, you know, uh, or yeah, it would normally when we were driving somewhere. Um, oh, it was, no, it was Abigail. It was it was a long time ago, um, and and there would be like a tiny temper song on, and he would be talking about you know um, <clears throat> walking the girl home from the club and stuff like that, and it, you know, and you think, well, why are you why are you playing music for you know that kind of music? But but kids are going to hear that kind of music, yeah. right? Yes. And I would say, hold on a minute, no, you're not. You, you know, you're not going <laughs> to. You know, I would I would speak to the the the, the singer if he says something about. Exactly. My daughter. I was yeah. like, wait, hold on Oy, a second. Mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't, don't you don't don't, don't, don't think like I'm that. gonna 
I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, not see that, mate. Yeah. Right. So, so there's an example. You just, you're always speaking to the culture. You know, whatever's happening, if it's a film or music or whatever, yeah. you're speaking back to it, and your kids are hearing you do it. Yeah. And they, they just learn. You know, they pick, they pick that up, and it, yeah. it becomes part of their, their life as well. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, know their world is a very, very important thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think instead of quite often we want to run from it. And, but I think speaking into it, it teaches them as well how to combat these thoughts, how to combat the things that are going on in their lives instead of just shutting it down and not dealing with it. That I think was, was probably my initial reproach, approach as a parent was to let's not listen to that. Let's not look at that. But actually that does them no good because you're not teaching them how to deal with the world around them. And that's what we have to do, whether we like it or not, whether we, you know, whether we have want to sit through that boring TV show that they watch, it's something that we should do to help them and to educate them and to give them the tools that they need to be able to combat all the things that are coming at them yeah. from everywhere. And sometimes I know it's age appropriate. I totally get yeah. that. But sometimes Christians are just too scared of the world. And, and and then we isolate ourselves too much and therefore we're not speaking to the world. Yeah. So in Proverbs, the father is taking the son, obviously age appropriate, to down the road. He shows the yeah. violence. He says, yeah. Look, if you if you let me take you to these these mates, mm. they're violent, you'll be destroyed. Let me take you to the end of the road where the prostitute is. Uh, because because if you go down that road, she'll kill you. Exactly. Um, and so he's not hiding in some sort of false, holy, religious world and pretending that these boys won't actually come up to that road. Yeah. He's taking them to the he, road. He isn't assumes he? they're going to get enticed. Yeah. And he's, yeah. he assumes that it's going to be very, very attractive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yes. and that's, 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 yeah. that's, that's the big thing. It's, it's violence, you know. Sex and violence, you know. That's, and it's that's... hard. It is hard. As mum, my initial reaction is, no, don't take my child. No. Yes. You know, keep them back. But then I also think about, hold on a second. The God I believe in is the, you know, yes. is overseeing all of this, is in control of all of this. And he, you know, I can trust him with this. And it's, it is hard and we may not get it perfect. You know, we're not going to get it perfect. We may not get it right all the time. Um, but God is sovereign and God will help us work through those situations. And we really need to trust God on this because it will, you know, taking your children into hard places means that you're doing it in a safe way as mm. well because you're there to talk them through these things to deal mm. with them and it's not their buddies on the playground talking them through who gets to them first yeah, yeah. you know i exactly. think that's the yeah. thing yeah and if and you I, live in a telly tubby land all the time they're never gonna yeah. be able to cope with life are they exactly yeah. um, and this this is a this is a, a, a tough thing to, for a, a christian parent, for for any parent to think about because you know lots of the time is we're just sort of in survival mode we're thinking about yeah. Yeah. what, like getting dinner made, you know, uh, <laughs> we're, th we're just thinking about bedtime or whatever, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and it's so, it's so tempting to just say, stop it when yep. you see them doing something. And, and again, this is another thing that the article picks up on, um, you know, but if you're always just saying, stop it, yep. then, then like, you know, try harder, I think. Or, or there is a time for yeah, stop there is. it. Isn't I was going to say, sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is. No, you're talking to your sister. <laughs> Stop talking to your yeah. sister like nine that. times out of ten. Yeah. I, I honestly <laughs> will say stop it nine yeah. times out of ten. But yeah. the, 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 that one time out of ten is so important, yes. and that's, that's somewhere to start, you know. And if it's surrounded, if you're surrounded by what we're saying, where you're discussing all yeah. kinds of things, yeah. and in the all kinds of things, you're obviously stuck uh, uh, yeah. discussing emotions and empathy and so forth. Yeah. Let me just uh, so because you know I just want to sort of uh, uh, um, come to the. The bit. What, what? What? When? What about a boy then learning? So we we know the we're teaching. We've been already teaching that the boy and the girl is different. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the empathy with the girl, like periods and uh, you know, and 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 the girl's body uh, changing so rapidly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you know, how do we help boys? I mean, that's that's something that's gonna, that that's going to come up. Uh, around probably age nine or ten, like right. year six, that's when I had that conversation with with Levi. You know, with, sometimes with Sam. for girls it can be before oh, then. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And no, I'm, I'm start, sorry, I'm talking about yeah, yeah. how boys. But will boys understand. will start to notice because yeah. the girls 
yeah. most girls develop before boys. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. would say nine or ten, yeah. which is year five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year I six. mean, I, I, I used, I've used like resources from a, a, a organization called Lovewise about that, and they've got a great book about you know uh, boys and girls, and they're different books. They're you know mm. um, one for the boys, one for the girls. But in the boys book, it will say your body's changing massively. Yeah. But guess what? Girls' bodies are changing as well, right. and and this is what's happening in the girls, and that's that's for them to deal with, you know. Uh, and here's here's what's changing in your body, and here's how you need to do that, like yeah. shower more, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they will, but but again, like most decent Christian literature that talks about this kind of stuff will, uh, you know, and and rightly um, tell your boys how the girls are changing, and you know how to be patient with that or how to not you know don't bring it up don't don't let's let's don't don't make a big joke out of it it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing you wouldn't like people joking about your smelly armpits you know don't make you know don't it's, mm. it's a private and personal thing and it's something that's quite um you know it's quite confusing so just be careful about how, you, how, how you treat girls like what, that what, what about then so so i you know i, I know you know you probably want to talk more generally, but when mm. when when girls are um, you know having their first period and and you know so, some some girls have you know, massive emotional yeah. Uh, is- yeah issues, how 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 would you teach your boys about that? Well, again, it's age appropriate, right? Mm. One, I think there's a lot of work to do with the girls first of all because. Initially, yeah, it's a surprise. It's a shock to the system. But one of the things I think is important is to teach your girls, don't be taken off guard. Don't be surprised by this. It's going to happen every month. That doesn't mean you can let your emotions run free during that time. You need to keep yourself in check as well. But also with boys, I think as as they, if they're learning about this, if they know about it, again, it's it's to say, and not to say, oh, she, it's okay because she's having her period. She can behave this way. No. And make that obvious for everyone there. You don't, you know, you don't get a get out of jail free card because this is happening to you. Your responsibility is to deal with your emotions and for boys to take in, you know, take it in, in their stride, to think about it, to maybe have a bit more patience with them, to talk it through them. But I think it is as things come up, You just, you deal with it just like any other emotion, you know, be sensitive. She's feeling a little bit more sensitive. So maybe we should back off a little bit, give her some space. Um, You know, she may not be as friendly to you this week as she was, you know, two weeks ago, but she's dealing with that. She, and we're going to help her deal with that, but you need to also help her deal with that and this is how you can do it by so, giving yeah. her some space i think most boys you know in, in my experience most boys at 11 uh, are, are still not <laughs> interested in girls in that way in that in in a way that they will be yes. deeply hurt if they get grumped at they were just that was like that's how girls you know yeah that's how girls they might, don't like girls yeah that's yeah. right yeah. so so i think it's quite a good um it's a, i think it's a, a great design feature that that boys don't start getting interested in girls till you know till sort of fourteen and, and yeah. above. Um, that uh, it, by then they they're used to you know all the th- all the emotions that that girls can have. Um, but again, it's it's from from the earliest age. You know, you're 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 if you've got all boys in your house, your the mum is the is the, the is the girl, and mm-hmm. your and the mum is. Uh, is the sort of like um, the guinea pig in a way. Like you have to, <laughs> you, you know, you have to treat your mum with respect and with kindness, and yes. um, don't talk back to her and help her. Yeah. So, um, so would you? you know? So let, let, let's say you only had boys. W- would you? W- would you actually do that book? Uh, girls are different. Uh, you definitely. Not, you, yeah. you could, yeah. but but I because think- they need to know about their friends. They need mm. to know about other, you know, women. They can't go along life you know along through life thinking well i only know about me mm. i don't know anything about what happens to a woman i think mm. you know that that is where we were creating this deep dark mystery that they're going to want to find out and they will find out so again it's best that you as the parent take control of that and you tell them the information that they need to know there's a there's a sentence i don't know whether we're coming towards the end and this is yeah. like a this is now a, a nasty sentence <laughs> to throw in where where uh, a lot of people would hate today, 
Um, but it talks, it, uh, where Paul is talking, uh, writing to Timothy, and he talks about women being the weaker sex. Mm. Um, now, he clearly, let's just get this clear. He's yeah. not talking about intellectually right. uh, uh, um, or, uh, 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 or putting them down. Yeah, the not, point of that is... They haven't got less dignity in God's eyes. No. So uh, how would you teach that to your boys? You know, is it is it back to the old fashioned opening doors for them? You know, wh- and what is wrong with teaching them that? Yeah, I I, th- I think that's, I think I, I definitely teach my boys to to be chivalrous. Let the girls know. go first. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lady, and to be the first. protector yeah. and the provider. Yeah. Mm. Whenever Dean goes out of the house and there's you know one boy at home at least, whoever that oldest boy is, they are have been told. Maybe not every time, but quite often it's right. Look after your family. Take care of your mum. Yeah. You need to help mum. I'm not here, so you need to do it. Normally, and when it, I'm not like away for a if few you're days, away I'm for like, a few you're days, you're the man of the house here. Or so if it's going to be a busy you know. day and I've got lots to get done, and they're given that role of protector, provider, um, and and they love it. They think it's great. Do I feel like? you know, this weakling of a mother that my 11 year old boy has been told to protect me. No, I think fantastic here. Let yeah. me give you a job to do. And he's going to, that, that, uh, it, what you've just said there doesn't mean to say that you're suddenly become a, a belittled little thing that just allows your 11 year old boy to dictate over you because you're the one who's saying, I'll give you a job. Yeah. I'll so, give you a yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think the more you do that and the more you say, you know, this is a, a a man's job or I want you to protect your mom or look after your sisters or look after your siblings or yeah. whatever. They take that on board. And I think all of our kids, um, even the youngest who is a boy, feels that protector role over his sisters, mm. right? If they're out at a park and they he feels that one of them might be threatened, he'll go, he'll do something about it or at least talk about doing something mm-hmm. about it. You know, yeah. I think and that is why, as a as, sorry, just to, because yeah. we, we are we yeah. should wrap up. Yeah. But that is why, if your boy, I, I guess I'm guessing uh, that one of the biggest sort of sins, if you like, mm. in in family life, yeah. is for boys to talk down or have a go at their mums. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, um, there, there there have been times where I've, I've said, uh, you know, you don't talk to your mum like that. There, yep. there have been times where I say. You do not raise your hands to your mum because you know because like yeah. things get heated sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And you know um, when you're trying to tell uh, a boy off uh, and and you're a, you're a, you're a woman, sometimes like they yeah. won't take it, and you know you have to back your your wife up. You know you have to say, look, don't you don't you dare. And again, that's mm. that's a a learning. You have to remember they're learning. You know, yeah. um, and and uh, yeah, they they've got to. So so again, um, however, whoever they're whoever they're getting angry with. You use your words, okay? Use your words to express your emotions. You don't lift your hands. That's going to be the temptation, mm. but that's always the easiest way, right? Yep. Use your words uh, to to express how you feel. Um, don't you know? And, but and, but yeah. even but, modify them. Yeah, yeah. when Absolutely. it comes yeah. to mum, you yeah. don't talk to mum like right, that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's laying down the foundations of empathy yeah. and care. Yeah. And, but going yeah. back to the so the whole weaker sex thing a little yeah. bit. Um, what? Why are we surprised? Well, okay. Um. It's it, it's horrendous that that women are being abused, right? By by anyone, by but by men. But if 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 we live in a culture where we're saying there's n- there, there is no such thing as the weaker sex, mm. why are we surprised when mm. men beat up women? Yeah, because if they're not, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's a madness to sort of to, 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 to wash to, away that to, to, to level massive yeah, truth. The difference. <laughs> it's not it belittling. It's, yeah, no, it's yeah. not yeah. at all. Um, and that's the whole point. Yeah. Don't you belittle your mother. Yeah, exactly. Don't you belittle a woman. Yeah, yeah. Don't you belittle uh, the time of months that they're going through. Yeah. Don't you belittle, you know, yeah, this yeah. is this is us taking uh, the lead yeah. in empathising. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, thank you very much. I'm sure there's lots to more to talk yeah, about yeah. there. Uh, yeah. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. Um, we will be in the next podcast uh, dealing with pornography, particularly. So uh, tune in for, for that. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Raising Boys. And uh, as as ever, if you go onto our website, cornerstonechurchkingston.org, then there's plenty more resources that you can download. Um, and uh, if you go to our 
YouTube channel, our social media channels. You can subscribe and follow those as well so you can keep up to date with all the content that we're, we're producing.